folks, welcome to Week in Review. This is where me and several other reviewers take a look back at the games that we reviewed last week and give you a rundown of what they're like and a quick rating on each of them and so you can see if there's something that you might be interested in going and watching the full review of. All right, I've already talked longer than I should have. Here we go. Hey, hey, everybody. Z Garcia here. Last week, I reviewed three games. I reviewed Cabo, which is a little card game. Similar to an Uno style game, but I think it's better than those and it allows for some uh, being social while still giving you a couple of things to think about and some push your luck elements. I like it. I also reviewed Trekking the National Parks here, an excellent uh, game about uh, visiting our national parks, traveling around, picking up uh, these gems that are on the board, simple card play, beautiful looking game, really, really good stuff for the family. I highly recommend it. And then I also reviewed Mangrovia, which I would also say is an excellent game. Also an excellent game for the family, but this one's a little bit more euro -y, And there's more going on in it, but also really recommend it. I, I enjoyed it very much, and it plays quickly, plays well, and gives you some uh, interesting tactics to think about Mangrovia. So, that was it for me this week. I'll see you next time. Oh, hey there, YouTube. I'm Forrest from Barrow's Game Corner. This is my week in review. First game I checked out was Say Anything Family Edition. I love the original Say Anything. It's one of my favorite party games of all time. This is a more family-friendly version of the game. But that being said, the original version really wasn't unfamily-friendly. This feels like a little bit of a cash-in. It should have been an expansion, but it's just its own a standalone game. But still, fantastic game if you don't have to say anything. Next, I checked out Casper the Friendly Ghost Game. This game is over 60 years old. It is your typical sorry. It's got a couple Monopoly rules in there, and it is really bad. It's not for kids. It's not for adults. And it has really weird arbitrary rules, like when you jump on someone, you just move ahead 20 spaces, and it's weird and bizarre, and don't recommend it. Last but not least, I checked out Battle Merchants. This is a two to four player, really fun economic game where you're playing as someone who creates weapons and then sells those weapons to ogres and elves and all sorts of things. It has a cool little area control mechanism, and it plays really well at all the different player counts. Highly recommend it. If you enjoyed this week in review, be sure to check out my thing here. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. This past week I did five reviews on my own YouTube channel. First was Octodice, which essentially is Aquasphere the Dice Game, but it's not from Stefan Feld. It's a Euro-style dice game around the Aquasphere uh, theme, and it wasn't very good. It was lackluster, it was boring, there wasn't a lot there. Uh, it just was uninspiring, and I would stay away from this one. It just, there wasn't a lot there. Uh, the next one is o uh, Odyssey. The Wrath of Poseidon, which was on my top 10 most anticipated games from Essen. It's a hidden movement game, one versus many, where one player plays a navigator trying to get three ships to a, to a sacred island, and Poseidon is hiddenly moving them around and trying to stop them from doing it. It's a decent one, but in the, in the end, I felt like you were too constricted, the game wasn't long enough, and it didn't give you enough freedom to really do, uh, you know, play cat and mouse. You really just had to go after things, and your moves were kind of scripted in that regard because of that. Uh, the next one is One Night Ultimate Vampire, which is a prequel to One Night Ultimate Werewolf, which adds another layer of depth, another layer of complexity. I think it's good for those that love One Night Ultimate Werewolf, but are kind of burnt out on it, and this will give them that new feeling again. Although new people will probably best off with One Night Ultimate Werewolf. And it doesn't bring anything really new to the social deduction genre, but if you like that space and you like that universe, in your experience, then it's one you'll want to check out. The next is And Then We Held Hands, which is a two-player puzzly co-op game. Very interesting theme, interesting mechanisms. Uh, you can't talk. It's got some interesting things there. It's fun. It's puzzly. It's it, it, You can play it light, but you can also play it very deep and strategic because there's some a lot of things to think there. Very unique game, and I really liked it. I actually kept this one. And the last of my favorite of the week is Trekking the National Parks, which is a game I learned from Z Garcia. It was his game of the month last last uh, month and it's a it's an it's a kickstarter game that came out about a year ago uh and it's about it's a similar to a ticket to ride style game where you're moving around routes you're claiming cards similar me mechanisms different theme the game is thematic uh, the components are awesome it's super fun it feels like ticket to ride in some respects but yet feels so different as well there's some other mechanisms with with collecting gems and doing set collection and trying to beat the other people if you like ticket to ride but you're looking for something different but in that same layer this is an amazing one that's trekking uh the national parks 
Hey folks, welcome back to another Week in Review segment with your truly Sam Healy. And, and this past week, I was able to do a lot of videos, a lot more than usual. I was able to do three pretty fast videos on uh, the Imperial Assault, some of the expansion packs. First of all, I did one video on uh, the R2 and D2 C3PO expansion pack and uh, gave my thoughts on their abilities and that type of thing. Then I also did another one on the Boba Fett expansion pack and what he brings to the table as far as Imperial Assault is concerned. And then I also talked about Kane Somos, the Stormtrooper Commander expansion pack for Imperial Assault. So go check out all three of those, the really, really fast uh, views. Also, I uh, was able to do a, another top five video of uh, my top five religiously themed board games. And uh, I chose that for a very specific purpose, purpose because I didn't want to say Christian because a lot of the games were not necessarily Christian. They were more biblical, which I know is attached to Christianity. But anyway, go check that video out. It's also a pretty quick view. It's only about 11 minutes, so check that one out as well. And then I was also able to do a comparison video of Fire and Axe of Viking Saga, both the from the uh, Asmodee Editions version as well as and compare that to the IDW uh, brand spanking new version that just came out last year uh, from IDW. So uh, go check that out. It's pretty in-depth, comprehensive, about 18, 19 minutes. So uh, again, uh, a good video, I think. I mean, I made it. So uh, go check that out. And then I was, uh, Tom and I were also able to do two Miami Dice uh, videos, one of Besieged, a new uh, miniatures heavy board game that came out from Cool Mini or Not. Uh, so again, a little bit too hard for my taste. Well, that's being nice. A lot too hard for my tastes. Uh, just didn't feel uh, very much like a good game. The miniatures are off the chart, cool. Uh, the artwork on the board is awesome, but it just didn't have a very good rule set that came along with it. So go ahead and check out that Miami Dice review. And then I also we were also able to do a Miami Dice for <clears throat> Star Wars Rebellion. Now this one is off the chain, y'all. And I know I'm kind of biased because I'm a huge Star Wars fan, but uh, the game that comes with it has a real uh, War of the Ring feel to it uh, from... from uh, you know, the Lord of the Rings franchise where it's good versus evil and you're all trying to get these little uh, things to go one side feels overwhelmingly powerful at the beginning of the game. But as the game progresses and as long as everybody's doing what they should be doing, it kind of balances out over time. Really fun game. Had a great time playing it. Uh, we're probably going to be working on a playthrough uh, very soon, so look for that as well. But go check out that Miami Dice video as well for a rebellion. That's about all I had today for last week. Next, see you on the flip side. Hey everybody, three reviews for you this week. Uh, the first one is used to be the number one game on Board Game Geek. Now it's the number two. I talked about the collector's edition for Twilight Struggle now being released. Should be more available later on this year. I uh, love this game. It was in my top 100. There's been a lot said about this game. It's amazing. Check out the review if you want to look at some of the collector's edition stuff. Otherwise, just get this game. It's amazing if you've not tried it. Uh, the next one is Nippon. This is from What's Your Game. Uh, latest design from the designers of Panamax and Madeira. Nice, crunchy, heavy Euro. Plays good at all the different player counts. I really enjoyed it. If you like heavy Euros, definitely give this one a shot. Uh, finally, uh, best treehouse ever. A little bit of a surprise in this one. It's kind of a quick, light drafting game in the spirit of like Sushi Go or maybe Fairy Tale. Kind of somewhere in between that in terms of complexity. Uh, nice, cool, fun theme and really nice mechanics with some interesting scoring uh, that happens from round to round. So take a look. Thanks. Unlike last week, where many of my reviews were negative, this week I only reviewed one negative game, and that was kind of surprising to me because it was from Cool Mini or Not, Besieged. Besieged is a tower defense cooperative game with beautiful miniatures and, and beautiful production, and I really thought we would love it even after reading the rules, but multiple games in, the luck ratio to our decision ratio was way too high, and games are going to be won or lost basically on what the, just the vast amounts of luck that's in the game. It's unfortunate.
Then we have Sing It. Sing It is a game which you flip a card over. There's words in the card. Think of a song that has those words in it. Family party style fun game. Then we have V Wars, which would have had a higher ranking had this production values been better. The IDW production values weren't that great, but it is kind of a cool game where one person is a vampire and they are hiding from other people and halfway through the game they reveal themselves and there's kind of a fight between humans and vampires all over the earth. Then we go to Tumult Royale. This is from the Toybers, Klaus Toyber, one of the designers designed Catan. This is a game in which players are grabbing tiles quickly to build statues of themselves all over the land, but greedy players are punished. It's kind of a one-trick pony, but it's a good trick, and the game is short enough that it's, it's something I haven't seen before in gaming. And then Food Fighters. The, each player has a grid of nine food warriors. We have meat versus vegetables and you're using dice and collecting beans to get upgrades back and forth after each other. Uh, great for kids or teenagers, um, but yeah, anyone can play it, but just realize that it's light with fantastic artwork. Then we have Voila, which is a circus themed game where you're pushing your luck by flipping cards and trying to accomplish a task in those cards, whether it's throwing something in the air or building a structure or seeing something on a table. Uh, a lot of silliness involved there, but it does have a cool push your luck feel to it. Jason and I took a look at Ra, which is a classic game in which you're bidding on tiles and getting sets of tiles, but you use these sun tiles to do so. And it's a very intriguing game. It's, you know, like I said, it's a classic that really hasn't ever been replicated other than by Kenichi himself, you know, spin-offs of the game. Uh, and so if you ever have a chance to try this one out, we recommend that. We also took a look at Grand Austria Hotel. This is a new game from the same designers who did Marco Polo and ha has a kind of almost a, f a feel of that same thing with special powers and you're having different guests come to your hotel and these hotel guests will eat at your cafe, then go into your hotel giving you special abilities. You have staff who give you special abilities. It's a lot of cool different things, a dice allocation system. My only negative thing, maybe with four players, a little too long between turns, uh, but other than that, a very fun game. Then I took another look at Arcadia. Arcadia is a game I reviewed uh, earlier last year, which was I, I did not give a very good review to. I felt like it was broken. Well, guess what? It was. They reprinted several of the cards. I tried them out. The game is fast. It's fun. It's entertaining. It's about building your own amusement park. If you like Splendor, it has some very uh, good similarities to that with some fun artwork. Hooray. I'm glad to turn this thumbs down to a thumbs up. And then finally, Star Wars Rebellion. Yes, I was as surprised as you to see an early review copy of that come, but we loved this game. And since I've done the review this week, I've watched it being played more and stuff, and my appreciation and excitement about it has only gone up. This is Star Wars in a box. This is one of the most cinematic, thematic games that I've seen in a long time. I was hoping for a good Star Wars feel. This one has gone above and beyond. And with that, that is the end of our week in review. Thanks so much, guys, for watching. Check out Board Game Breakfast for all the news and everything else this week. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell, and this has been Week in Review.